Hello, Salesforce enthusiasts. Welcome back to our channel. Today, we have an exciting journey ahead as we explore the ins and outs of Lightning Web Components, or LWC, in Salesforce. LWC is at the forefront of modern Salesforce development, offering a powerful and efficient way to build dynamic and responsive user interfaces. In this video, we'll cover everything from the basics to advanced techniques, helping you master the art of Lightning Web Components. Let's begin with our first question. Question number one. What is a Lightning Web Component, LWC, and how does it differ from other components in the Salesforce ecosystem? The best answer for this question would be, a Lightning Web Component, LWC, is a lightweight and modern UI framework from Salesforce for building web components on the Lightning platform. It is built on the web standards and provides a component-based architecture. LWC differs from other components in terms of performance, standardization, and usage of modern web standards. If the interviewer asks about a practical use case then you can use the following example. For example, if you have a Salesforce application with a complex UI that needs to be more responsive and modular, transitioning from Aura components to Lightning Web components could lead to improved performance and a more streamlined development experience. Let's check the second question. Question number two. Explain the lifecycle hooks in Lightning Web Components. How do they differ from the lifecycle hooks in Aura Components? The best answer for this question would be, Lightning Web Components have a set of lifecycle hooks that allow developers to perform actions at different stages in the component lifecycle. The key hooks include constructor, connected callback, rendered callback, disconnected callback, and error callback. These hooks differ from Aura Components in their names and execution order providing more consistency and simplicity in LWC. A practical use case for above question can be the following. For example, if you need to initialize data when a component is connected to the DOM, you would use the connected callback hook. For example, fetching user-specific data from Salesforce when a component is loaded. Moving on to the next question. Question number three. How do you communicate between Lightning Web Components? Describe the different ways to pass data from a parent component to a child component and vice versa. The best way to answer this question would be, communication between Lightning Web Components can be achieved through properties, events, and a public API to pass data from a parent to a child, use properties with the at the rate API decorator. To pass data from a child to a parent, use custom events. I have given you enough overview about the answer of this question. Let's go through a practical use case for this topic. Imagine you have developed a parent component that displays a list of records and a child component that shows details of the selected record. You can pass the record ID from the parent to the child through a property and notify the parent when the record is updated using a custom event. Now, let's dive into the at wire decorator in LWC. Question number 4. What is the role of the at the rate wire decorator in Lightning Web Components? Provide an example use case where at the rate wire is beneficial. You can answer it as follows. The at the rate wire decorator is used to wire a component to a Salesforce Apex method or a Lightning Web service. It simplifies data retrieval and eliminates the need for boilerplate code. A beneficial use case for at the rate wire decorator is fetching data from Salesforce without manual Apex calls. If I have to highlight one practical use case then we can consider the example of contact management application. For instance, in a contact management app, you might use at the rate wire to fetch a list of contacts from Salesforce, making the component automatically refresh whenever the data changes. Events play a crucial role in Lightning Web Components. Let's explore events in LWC in the next question. Question number 5. Explain the concept of events in Lightning Web Components. How can you handle events in LWC, and what is the purpose of the event, stop propagation, method? The possible answer for this question can go like this, events in LWC are used to communicate between components. They can be standard or custom. Handling events involves using the on syntax in the template to specify the event name. The event, stop propagation, method prevents the event from bubbling up the DOM hierarchy. The possible practical use of events in LWC can be done in a collaborative document editing app. You might use a custom event to signal that a user has made changes to the document. The event could contain details about the changes made. Before we move forward in this video, I wanted to pause and ask, do you have any questions, suggestions or doubts? 
If yes, then please feel free to use the comment section to dump your questions, suggestions or comments. We will try to respond to them at the earliest. Thank you for your patience with us and watching the video till this point without wasting further time. Let's jump on the remaining questions. Let's talk about encapsulation in Lightning Web Components. Question number 6. What is the Shadow DOM, and how does it enhance encapsulation in Lightning Web Components? Provide an example of how you can style components using the Shadow DOM. You can explain it like this. The Shadow DOM is a web standard that encapsulates the styling and structure of a component, preventing styles from leaking out and styles from the global scope from affecting the component. This enhances encapsulation by isolating the component's internals. The practical use case for Shadow DOM could be a custom card component. You can use the Shadow DOM to encapsulate its styles, ensuring that the card styling doesn't conflict with the styles of the parent or other components. In the next question let's delve into programming paradigms used with Lightning Web Components. Question number 7. Describe the difference between imperative and declarative programming in the context of Lightning Web Components. When would you choose one approach over the other? You can explain it like this. In the context of LWC, declarative programming involves describing what you want to achieve, and imperative programming involves describing how to achieve it using explicit statements. Declarative programming is often preferred for simplicity and readability, while imperative programming might be chosen for more fine-grained control. You can consider the following as the practical use case for the above. For instance, if you're creating a form where the structure and behavior are straightforward, you might use declarative programming to define the form fields. On the other hand, if you are implementing complex validation logic, you might use imperative programming to handle the validation process. In the next question, let's enter the Lightning Data Service, LDS, a powerful tool for simplifying data retrieval and manipulation in Lightning Web Components. Question number 8. What is the role of the Lightning Data Service, LDS, in Lightning Web Components? How does it contribute to efficient data retrieval and manipulation? The best explanation for this question would be, the Lightning Data Service, LDS, is a standard service provided by Salesforce that simplifies data retrieval and manipulation in Lightning components. It eliminates the need for Apex code to read, create, or update records, and it ensures data consistency and security. For practical use case of LDS you can consider a case management app, in that app you might use LDS to retrieve case details without writing Apex code. LDS would handle the data retrieval efficiently and automatically manage updates when the data changes. Moving beyond the code, let's explore how Lightning Web Components integrate with the Lightning App Builder. Question number 9. Explain the concept of Lightning App Builder and how Lightning Web Components can be used in the Lightning App Builder. The best answer to this question would include the following. Lightning App Builder is a tool that allows users to customize their Salesforce experience by designing custom pages with components. Lightning Web Components can be added to Lightning App Builder, providing a way for users to create dynamic and personalized app experiences. If I have to mention a practical use case for this then I would consider the example of Sales Dashboard. For instance, in a Sales Dashboard, a user could use Lightning App Builder to add a custom Lightning Web component that displays real-time sales data in a visually appealing chart format. To wrap up our comprehensive guide, let's explore client-side caching, a technique that can significantly improve the performance of our Lightning Web components. Question number 10. How can you implement client-side caching in Lightning Web components to improve performance? Provide an example scenario where caching might be beneficial. You can explain it like this. Client-side caching in LWC can be implemented using browser storage mechanisms like local storage to store and retrieve data. Caching is beneficial when you want to reduce the number of server requests and improve the responsiveness of the application. To highlight a practical use case for this we can consider a product catalog app. For example in a product catalog app, you might use client-side caching to store product information locally. This way, when a user repeatedly accesses the catalog, the data is retrieved from the local cache, reducing the need for frequent server requests. We've covered a lot of ground today, from the fundamentals of Lightning Web Components to advanced techniques. Let's quickly recap the key takeaways to reinforce your understanding. We started by understanding what LWC is and how it differs from Aura Components. We explored the life cycle hooks, different methods of communication between components, the power of at the rate wire decorator, 
the role of events, encapsulation through the shadow dom, and much more. Whether you are a beginner or an experienced developer, mastering these concepts is essential for building efficient and scalable applications on the Salesforce platform. We encourage you to explore further, experiment with these concepts, and stay tuned for more advanced Lightning Web Components topics in our upcoming videos. Remember, the journey of mastering the technology is ongoing, and the Salesforce ecosystem is ever-evolving. Keep coding, keep learning, and you'll continue to unlock new possibilities in your development journey. Before we wrap up, I want to express our sincere thanks for joining us today. Your time and engagement mean the world to us. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it with your fellow developers. Your support helps our channel grow and reach more enthusiasts like yourself. For more content on Salesforce, development, and technology, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Your engagement helps us create more valuable content for you.